Yes, today I ask for uh, you to make uh, to answer a questionnaire on the on the online questionnaire. Uh, there was some uh, technical issue, it seems, so it's not the exercise is not quite uh, finished. Good, uh, so we have to ask you to kindly redo the exercise. So the questionnaire is online. Please download it to your computer, uh, answer the question on your computer, and send it back. Do not write online because it causes problems. Okay. Thank you very much. And yeah, and yeah, and if you could do that for to provide that tonight or tomorrow in the day, so we can make some kind of discussion on Friday. Friday. All right, Friday morning. Okay, so we are starting the afternoon session. So today we have, uh, this afternoon we have two uh, presenters, uh, Fatima Benaisa and Olivier Chanel. So Fatima is a specialist uh, of uh, biomonitoring. She's from uh, University of Bejaya and uh, cooperating much with uh, Isabella and, uh, and INSERM in Paris. So uh, Fatima is going to talk about us about plant biomonitoring of air pollution. Okay. Merci. Hello. I am uh, Fatima bin Isa from uh, Algeria. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Archimed is uh, a part of uh, Charmex, which, uh, which is a project that the, the main uh, objective is, uh, is to ex expertise to patch further ahead the limits of what we know on the sanitary and economic impact of air quality and climate changes. In this context, that this review presentation discuss the principle mechanism advantage and disadvantage of biomonitoring of air pollution. <clears throat> air pollution has been recognized as the world's top problem in many strategic environmental policies. However, it's still inadequately uh, collaborated by regulatory monitoring due to the balance between cost and practicable content. <clears throat> when we come to study air pollution, it's uh, an interdisciplinary uh, term. So uh, many, many, uh, many um, disciplinary come to, uh, to study this, uh, this topic. It's uh, from the generation and control of air pollution at the source and the dispersion uh, and the modelization uh, of air pollution and uh, another um, equip to work about assessment of air pollution in human health and uh, uh, vegetation and animals. Very tools are used to um, monitor air pollution. The classic uh, tools are uh, physical chemical uh, tools, then uh, biomonitor, um, the, the, then biomonitor tools. Actually, uh, the, the third uh, tools are the uh, tele-monitoring, uh, tele which is uh, done with the satellites. For this presentation, it's, it consists to the, uh, the, the, the biomonitoring, the methods used uh, to assess the, uh, to monitor air pollution. So, uh, 
I suggest that uh, yesterday you saw with uh, Constantinus the biological monitoring with human, so with the biomarkers, and today we will see uh, uh, biomonitoring with plants. So uh, we detail the uh, methods used for plants biomonitoring, a savoir passive active approach, and uh, different uh, levels used to uh, monitor air pollution. <coughs> biomonitoring is uh, a method used uh, organism or parts of organism to uh, determine the condition or changes in the environment. The uh, organism used as biomonitor have to be firstly characterized by a settled living mode of the organism to be representative for a given ecosystem or region. Secondly, they should be characterized by the wide geographic occurrence. Third, the biomonitoring organism should be easy to identify even by a non-expert and it should be easily collected. The objectives of biomonitoring is like uh, physical chemical methods. First is monitoring spatial and temporal distribution of the effects of pollutant. Second, the point source is to monitor point sources tracking. Participation in health risk assessment studies. When we have results about biomonitoring <coughs> with plants, we project uh, the results for health risk assessment, public information and decision support in public policies. Before uh, detailing in the biomonitoring with plants, we have to explain uh, some concepts like passive and active approach. For passive approach, it's using organisms that are in the region, autochton in the region. Active approach is to transpl uh, is, is the transplantation of plants to uh, detect the uh, or to measure the pollution in the area desired. The choice between passive and active. Uh, I approach is uh, delicate in uh, some cases because the two approaches have uh, uh, the advantage and the disadvantages. The, uh, the advantage of passive uh, approach is that um, organism accumulation level generally above de detection for a long exposure time. Low, low risk of vandalism, so we, when, we, uh, when we have a space, uh, a space like a uh, biomonitor, it uh, exists uh, in, the, in the area with uh, big effectives, so it's, uh, it, ha it has less uh, a risk of vandalism, reduced cost of transplantation and analysis, whereas active uh, approach is uh, preferred because the, de the density of seeds, location and species uh, are, are chosen so as desired. Deposition rate calculated from the exposure time and use organism from in a contaminated environment. Four legs of the passive method. So uh, passive method is uh,
possible uh, has like uh, advantage uh, disadvantage uh, it's possible like of simples whereas uh, for active approach possible risk of vandalism So, uh, air pollution affects uh, life in different levels, from the molecular to community. When we see uh, for the uh, molecular level, the type of interaction is chemical and biochemical processes. For the individual impact, it's a direct physiological response. And for the population and community, its changes of structure and competitive patterns. When we have to choose a method for biomonitoring, we have to look firstly for the level of biological organization and for the legibility effects. If we are uh, confronted to uh, in infra individual level and invisible symptom, we have to choose bio, uh, biomarkers. And if we have uh, uh, individual and visible symptoms, we have to choose bioindicator method, bioindication method. And if we are confronted to, or we have, uh, we, had, we have interested to, to study uh, a community, supra-individual, and then we have to, uh, to study visible symptom, we have to choose bio-integration method. For the human uh, biomonitoring, we have uh, the, 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 the so human um, uh, parts, are used to, bio, uh, to, to monitor air pollution, like biomarkers, so uh, the fluids like blood and uh, tissues are used to uh, monitor air pollution. Three, uh, three concepts in uh, biomonitoring bio used human uh, is, uh, are uh, proposed. The first is the exposure, uh, the, so the, uh, the biomarker of exposure, it's uh, one we have to, to detect measurement about external laws and uh, internal laws. The second method is biomarkers, it it's consists of biomarkers of susceptibility when we have to, uh, to know the, sensit the sensitivity of uh, individuals or early biological effects, and lastly, biomarkers of effects. It consists of clinical diseases. Uh, human biomonitoring have many, uh, uh, to know the effects of air pollution uh, in uh, the health, so uh, human biomonitoring present many uh, benefits, advantages, like uh, identify priority chemical and concentration, determine who has level associated with health effects, identify vulnerable uh, groups, track trend in exposure to current and emerging chemical, assess, assess effectiveness of public health efforts, and uh, seat priorities for research policy action to reduce exposure. But uh, human health has some uh, lakes, like a uh, lake of toxicology and epidemiological information to interpret the result, lake of mean meaningful reference levels. Exposure markers can be difficult to relate the possible health outcome. This is the, uh, the big advent, uh, disadvantage of this method. Not only uh, if we detect biomarkers uh, of exposure, that uh, the individual will be affected by the air pollutant. No information about the source of 
uh, or a story of exposure. We don't know if this, this is due to the uh, long or uh, short exposure. Snapshot of substance present in the body at a single point in time or accumulation of exposure from many sources and roots over a period of time. So, plants biomonitoring is proposed. It's better because uh, it's simple, it's cheap, it's fast, and can supplement the classic physio physical chemical method. The mechanism of biomonitoring air pollution by plants is based uh, is based by the, the symptoms. These symptoms in plant is related with firstly with the type of pollutant, uh, gases or partic uh, particle, uh, organic or inorganic pollutant, concentration uh, of pollutant, and contacting time of pollutant if it's short or long time contacting. So here uh, we see some damages mechanism uh, due to pollutant, firstly for uh, dioxide de soufre, uh, which affect the, the chlorophyll uh, decomposition, ozone, which affect uh, distract cell wall of palisade tissue and epidermal cells, and the chlorine, which destruct chlorophyll. So uh, each pollution has its effect in um, plants. When we have to study, uh, to, to, to conduce a study about uh, biomonitoring, we have to use three uh, groups of plants. Uh, height plants, uh, moose, or uh, lichens. Here we present uh, the, the sensitivity of uh, height, higher plants for some, uh, for some pollutant. The, the, the pollutants were classified in four groups. The first class is very sensitive, uh, very toxic, phytotoxic gases like ozone and dioxide de soufre. So two approaches were common uh, and two species were used over the world. The first active approach the, which used tobacco to detect the effects of ozone in uh, plants. The second is the passive approach using uh, penis helpensis. And uh, a bioaccumulation method is proposed with uh, rye, uh, rye grass. The second class is less uh, phytotoxic, so the um, Nitrogen uh, oxides. Uh, we have uh, many uh, studies that uh, studied uh, rye grass, the effects of uh, this pollutant, these two pollutants in rye grass with passive or active approaches. And we have the, for, uh, the fourth class, which uh, pollutants are less dangerous and less phytotoxic. So the, we use petunia hybrida like bioindicator of uh, polycyclic um, hydrocarbon aromatic polycyclic. The practical method used to, uh, to uh, biomonitor air pollution with the higher plants so the pollutant affect higher plants uh, soit uh, in stomate or in cuticle uh, in the surface. They enter uh, in the 
the plant from the voice and affects tissues. So the methods used to uh, detect the, uh, this effect are biomarkers, bioindicators, uh, and biointegrators. But if we, and we are interested to uh, sell the accumulation in the surface of plant, we have to use the bioaccumulation study. Mosses are used like biomonitors because uh, the, the, their talus is uh, permeable for pollutant. These monitor, biomonitors don't have any epidermis and those pollutants easily penetrate their tissue. Many uh, studies are uh, done to detect the effects of uh, pollutant gases like uh, using and dioxide de soufre and uh, organic pollutant in this category of plants. We choose them uh, most to bioindicator pollutants because as they are ubiquitous, uh, they are present in any place they, uh, for the, the majority, uh, exist in uh, our cosmopolite, but uh, they, they, uh, the, the procedure, however, have not been standardized yet. The third category of plants used to detect uh, air pollution, uh, the, the, the impact of air pollution in plants are lichens. Lichens uh, are uh, uh, well established bioindicators bio of air pollution and the consequence effect on human health. Several major initiatives have been designed to map lichen as proxies of air pollution. They are used to uh, monitor air pollution because firstly, uh, to determine <coughs> the concentration of specific pollutant. Some other studies use lichens to use uh, the effects of pollution sources on the life span and presence or absence of life species to map out the distribution and effects of pollution in specific area. Other, uh, other studies use lichens to take healthy uh, lichens with little background pollutant accumulation and to transplant them into polluted area to, to measure accumulation of pollutant or the consequential degradation of talus. There are many uh, indexes used to, um, uh, to, to, to take link between uh, effects of air pollution uh, in uh, plants and the effects in health. Between uh, these indexes, there, are, there is uh, the index folial, uh, the this index is used to uh, index of uh, atmospheric purity. So it, uh, it, with, uh, with lichens, we have to, uh, to know about the quality of health that uh, humans uh, inhale. The advantage of biomonitoring with the plants is that uh, it, it, visual, it visualizes the, the presence and impact of pollutant, provide readily understandable information in level of air pollution, identify the risk posed by air pollution, and initiate broader educational action on air pollution. It's a risk que uh, the the biomonitoring has disadvantages of, so the, the main disadvantage of biomonitoring is the lack of similarity in the exposure of biomonitors and human 
to a given pollutant. Another problem is that in some cases, knowledge of correlation between the concentration of pollutant in biomonitor samples and the environmental concentration or this depositional flux are completed. Both uh, in conclusion, so both physical chemical technique and uh, biomonitoring are complementary uh, because the first, uh, which is the physical chemical uh, measure pollutant concentration, uh, whereas monitors, biomonitors reflect effects. For our health, it's always good to know and to find more about air pollution monitoring and so to take measures to pre prevent diseases. But the most fundamental way for our health is that do everything to reduce emission of pollutant. Only in this way, environment will become cleaner and our uh, health will uh, be bitter. So we have plenty of time for questions. Thank you, Fatima. Very useful. I would like to, to say also that there are some data that uh, links plant my biomonitoring to, for example, what I know, respiratory health, some data on leg and lung cancer that are uh, uh, indirectly related because uh, of what you say, because they are an indicator of air pollution, obviously. Uh, so uh, this is offer, I mean, it's not for this uh, kind of, uh, of the study we are doing now, but uh, uh, can be a useful indicator of uh, quality of air uh, and etc. Thank you. I'm glad about um, Isabella's contribution that um, there could be some possible, maybe in the indirectly though, correlation between um, the health of the lichens, the plant monitor, and um, human health. Because um, one of the points you made, I think before the concluding slide, was that there it was no similarity. There was a lack of similarity between um, the biomonitor and human health. And that for me was very discouraging because I think there could be some correlation. But my point is, I mean, there was a slide um, you showed on with a formula IAP is equal to the summation of some FI. I think maybe after this. Yes. But what's FI? It's index of atmospheric purity. It's uh, uh, some. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> no, I know what it is. is it? Maybe it's I'll the presence, it. for the la, 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 freq frequencies of the presence of species. La fréquence, de, la présence. Um, it's. Uh, um, with, with lichens, we, uh, we, we quantify number in, in each place, we, in each area, we quantify the presence and the absence of some, uh, some species um, that are sensitive for X pollutant. And we uh, sum the, the la somme des fréquences de, de, de la présence des lichens. We quantify uh, then we quantify the number of individuals by surface. Uh, so it's then, uh, for example, we take uh, tree, tree, les arbres, le tronc d'arbre. We we take a surface about uh, uh, one meter. Uh, bon, 
from the sun, and we take 20, uh, 25 uh, centimeters for each tree, and we, we, say, we, we look the, the number of individual of specific species, which are sensitive for tell uh, pollutant. So, and then we calculate the index of atmospheric purity. Maurizio, you wanted to add something about it? Yes, uh, I think that in Europe, uh, you can download the European guidelines for uh, lichens uh, evaluation of air quality and you have explained everything because as uh, Isabel Fatima. Uh, Fatima has explained, sorry, uh, you have to consider not only how many lichens you have but also the type of lichens because there are really sensitive lichens that disappear with low concentration of air pollution and lichens that are m really much more resistant, so you have still a, a, a good amount of lichens of, with high concentration of pollution. So it's a composite, well, that F is a composite factor that take into account the number and the species of lichens. So it's, and then you have to select, as has been said, a, a, a constant uh, level from the ground, so you don't have the, the influence from the ground, and you have to consider a surface predetermined to count the species and the number, so it's... Uh, but I think that European legislation as a uh, general procedure and you, can, you, you should be able to find it. On the other side, I'm not really sure how much you can infer from lichens and masses to human health. Uh, I'm a little bit skeptical because as we have said also from toxicological point of view, uh, in vivo system rats are really different from humans and uh, so when we extrapolate numbers from rats to humans, there's a huge debate how much we can. So the point is to have uncertainties. You can use it, but again the uncertainties will be really, really high. You can have an indication maybe but, yeah. yeah. Not maybe, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's what is called the ecological approach. Then that raise the hypothesis on which you work. When you have, uh, this is the reason why they are using a lichen at the European level, because it's an indicator of something. So uh, we know in epidemiology, very often things have been observed at the ecological level, population that uh, had uh, different diseases because uh, of uh, different uh, exposure, and then uh, from there to individual data, individual studies, etc. Obviously, toxicological approach is really important, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, is one approach among the others. I would like to complete, because in the first day, we had in a talk, my talk, and uh, Olivier, the word the biodiversity. You don't find uh, all the time because of a biodiversity. Actually, lichen is a part of an ecosystem. And uh, uh, what we know is that, uh, I briefly said the last day, when uh, there is a loss of biodiversity, human <laughs> health is uh, threatened in different ways. I'm in the field of uh, respiratory allergic diseases. Where there are many data, but now there are data also for the skin. So uh, it's true. You are skeptical because uh, uh, you are checking having a really a toxicological approach, and, uh, uh, but I mean, it's a part of a more complex uh, system. If, if I understand well, you are, you are looking for the biodiversity of lichen as an indicator of the presence of pollution, and, and with mosses, you are analyzing the quantity of pollutants within the mass to check whether they are exposed or not. Is that the case? We look at the biodiversity of uh, lichens. It's the bioindication of the air pollution. So presence or absence of uh, uh, species is an indication 
of uh, presence of tail pollutant. But we, uh, if we measure the, uh, the, the quantity of pollutant by uh, bioaccumulation, this is the bioaccumulation. When we use Soxley, for example, to extract uh, the uh, hydrocarbon uh, aromatic polycyclic from lichens, this is bioaccumulation. We, we, we quantify the, um, the quantity of uh, pollutant absorbed by uh, the, the lichen or by the plant. I, I have a question myself. So, um, if we measure the uh, the, uh, the pure air purity uh, with the presence or absence of uh, lichens, uh, do the, these lichens come and go? I mean, if if they disappear because the air quality is bad, and then the air quality gets better, do they reappear? Uh, of course, they are uh, s uh, s the the. The plant primitive, uh, primitive plants, so it, 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 uh, it, it's not as, as sont pas exigeant. They demand okay, so. just humidity and for lichens. Mm -hmm. They are chosen, one, one uh, character that we are used lichens for biomonitoring because they are sont fréquentes, cosmopolites. Quand on fait l'échantillonnage, ça ne va pas impacter sur environment. There is no impact for the environment when we collect these uh, lichens because, yes. Uh, uh, thank you for your presentation. It's me. Um, my question is uh, for monitoring uh, pollutants, there are some reference methods, especially the active uh, uh, sampling measurement. So uh, my question is, maybe the, the biomonitoring lake, for example, are uh, widely distributed in the areas, but have you never uh, compared between the active measurement and lichen, and what was the what were the differences between the, the two Act methods? Active and passive, in general, they are complementary because active it's to take to take um, samples from uh, area which is pure, for example, forest. We uh, we take uh, samples and then we plant them uh, in areas which are. Uh, uh, considered like uh, uh, polluted area. And then we do uh, the extraction of the pollutant. This is the bioaccumulation. And then we quantify. This is the uh, active approach. Passive approach, it's not for us to, uh, to give samples. Plants are exist in the area where is, uh, where is pollution. So they are autochton, they are original of the area. We have just to take, for example, needle, needles, les aiguilles, the, the, the needles from um, trees to, to do the extraction of pollutant. So uh, it's always complementary between the two approaches. Um, uh Another thing, for example, uh, if we use the, the aerosols, we have the capacity to, to analyze wide spectrum of, of pollutants, many uh, 20 pollutants at the same time, from one filter. However, for biomonitoring, maybe the pollutants that you can uh, measure or uh, how to have the concession maybe is limited. Sorry, is limi limited? Limited. Limited. What it is limited? <laughs> oh, uh. there, there, are, there are differences. For example, if I use the active sampling yes. for one filter, I can use, I can analyze maybe 20 uh, pollutants, uh, heavy metals, ions, black uh, carbon, How to characterize sulfate. pollutants? Uh, however, for a for, uh, Chromatography, for example, the, the method of chromatography, it's to detect the pollutant, yes, uh, to characterize the pollutant in particle. Yeah, we can use, uh, for example, lichen. We can use lic uh, one um, uh, space of lichen for all the pollutants or each. Ah, specificity. Uh, if there is specificity in the uh, four particle, 
uh, the most of lichens are used to, uh, to, to, to characterize the, it, with no specificity. It's, it, there is no specificity in lichens, mainly. In higher plants, yes, there is a sensitivity. When I, I sit the sensitivity uh, of, uh, uh, of pollutant for classes, I didn't sit uh, for lichens, just for higher plants. Because for, uh, for lichens, they accumulate. They have no cu cuticle in the... So they absorb all pollutant. Uh, thank you very much, Fatima. My question is, uh, I mean, it's new for me. Lichen, you know, it's uh, quite new for me. Uh, if I want to use lichen, for example, in Cote d'Ivoire, where we have seasons, yeah. dry season and uh, rainy season. So what advice can you give me? Uh, yes, uh, bon, uh, remark for... for uh, uh, for in developing countries, it's the on a pas le choix. We have no choice to use the uh, the, the bio monitoring because we have not uh, the equipment to, to to monitor the air pollution. But the the season of sampling lichens is uh, in um, winter. Winter. So in January, uh, if you have, uh, but uh, each. Uh, uh, each, each, each area have uh, its uh, lichens. So I'm asking that question because uh, we are going to start a project. So maybe it will be yes, interesting, yes, you know, to try those uh, lichens yes. during that project. It will yes. be maybe useful. Yes. And it will be maybe the first time for, yeah, in the northern part of uh, Cote d'Ivoire, sure, for example. There are, sure, there are in the... Uh, Côte d'Ivoire, sure, there are lichens specific in the area. Uh, I have a question uh, about the measurement of uh, here. <laughs> I have a question about uh, the, uh, the pollutants. So uh, how uh, do you evaluate your, uh, your measurements? This is the first question. And the second, which pollutants are uh, uh, very uh, dangerous. Uh, I mean, which, uh, which pollutant uh, has a great impact than the others? Oh. <clears throat> How ev e evaluate air pollution? What? Comment euh, tu évalues en fait les, les mesures de pollution? Ah, voilà. uh, par rapport uh, aux autres méthodes? Donc la méthode que tu utilises. Oui. Euh, quelle, quelle, Sorry, confidence, quelle confiance tu donnes à ta méthode par rapport aux Benstein. autres ah, là, je... euh, 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 Regarding the method do you use, uh, how many confidence do you, do you give to your method uh, comparing to the others? This is the first question. And the second, which pollutant has a great impact uh, than, uh, no, than the others? others. Uh, for the first question, when we, we have no choice, like I, I tell for the, the monsieur, uh, it, we have no choice. So it's the better for me, for Algeria, biomonitoring is the better method because we have no equipment. So the, I have confidence uh, 100%. Uh, but but, but it, uh, it, it rests. So the rest, uh, this method is, 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 uh, has legs. I see the, the, the disadvantage of this method. We have always, for Europe, for example, they always try to uh, do all things in the same time. Because in, uh, quand on vient pour étudier le vivant, c'est tellement difficile. We have to use all methods to, to have uh, a good uh, result. Uh, but uh, for the, the, the inconvenience of biomonitoring is that we, we can't project results uh, uh, found about plants for human health. Plant and the human are not the same. We are uh, only the vivant, not, but uh, we have not... Uh, so um, this is the, the great disadvantage of this method. 
you tell uh, the, the second question, please. <laughs> the, we can't, we can't judge very dangerous. I see the four classes, the very dangerous, I, uh, the dioxide de soufre, for example. But uh, for, for, for some plants, it's dioxide de soufre. M may, uh, for others, it's uh, euzon. Uh, so, uh, yes. They are all nefast for plants. More suggestion? Yeah, we are running out of time, so maybe one last question after that. Uh, for IAP, uh, index of atmospheric pu purity, I think we can calculate it, right? Yes. I suggest if you put the equation of the formula to can understand how we can calculate this index. Uh, well, yes, we take in the same time the... The, 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 the quality of uh, uh, the, the, the la list des espèces recensées, uh, the list of species found in the area, and then the, the number of individuals, the density, the, la densité, uh, the, the, the density of, um, of the, this space. It's from this that we calculate the indice of purity. It's in, in the same time uh, the, the number of species and the number of individual uh, of each species. Space. That, that's maybe a suggestion so that you can be more explicit in your slide that yes. we, will, we will be put on the web. Just have, sorry, a last question from uh, Samane, who is uh, following us uh, on the internet. She's asking you, she's got two questions. She says, um, uh, in passive methods, uh, we use plants that exist at the location, and how can we find out how long is the exposure? Passive, for passive, yes. And the second question would be, when there are different pollutants present at the same place, do they interfere? in the amount of absorption of each pollutant? Sorry, I've got the question in English, so I can't tell you more. <laughs> Want me to repeat it? Yes, please. When there are different pollutants, mm -hmm. do they interfere, ah, inter interfere in the amount of absorption, the quantity d'absorption of each pollutant, de chaque polluant? question concerning <laughs> for the first question uh, concerning the passive approach uh, uh, we, we have uh, this is the inconvenient of this approach we have no to it's not for us to choose uh, the the period of exposure the, the species or other condition the species is here but if, uh, in general how to to take uh, how to choose uh, his uh, bio indicator in area is the the species which is the most frequent in the place for example we done uh, in bijaya we done a study about uh, uh, bio indication of, uh, of hydrocarbon uh, with the lichens we use uh, l'olivier l'olivier to 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 do um, simples because it's the species the most frequent in the region so uh, the the period of exposure is not precise so uh, but uh, the the sampling for example if you mean the when we take sampling it, it ha it's uh, to have uh, uh, 20, 20 days uh, or minimum uh, without rain to take to take uh, samples from uh, from uh, uh, for example for the higher plants we have to to, to take uh, our uh, samples uh, in the period we, in the dry period without rain. Uh, 
uh, I would, for the, the second, you ask if there is uh, a mixture uh, of pollutant. If is there uh, a preference uh, in absorption uh, in the lichen? Uh, for this question, I, I, I don't know really. Um, but uh, in general, when, when we do the extraction uh, of pollutant, we don't take uh, this condition in, um, in consideration. So uh, there is no preference. For me, there is no preference. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for the effort. So without transition, we are uh, passing from the plants and biodiversity to uh, economics.